Hey guys, so welcome to this video. This is kind of like a special one, but not really because it's technically, let me fix this lighting, because it's technically a vlog, but like also not. So this is me with my autoimmune journey, not really journey, no, not journey at all. Um, this is just me and a vlog of someone with an auto with autoimmune disorders. Um, so basically, this is just going to be me like going through my week we'll see if it gets to a week it might only be a few days just because sometimes vlogging is exhausting for me it's hard um i don't love to disclose everything in my life but i'm also not scared to so like for me talking about this is not a big deal at all not a big deal whatsoever i'm used to talking about this um i'm really working to bring awareness towards these issues not issues kind of issues working to bring awareness towards these medical issues and disorders because I have a lot and a lot of them aren't talked about a lot because they're not they're not that common in children um and so me I'm trying to bring awareness to it and if you have autoimmune disorders tell you that it's okay to be you it's okay it's okay to talk about what you want to it's okay to hide what you don't want to talk about but that you can live a normal life comfortably and that's that's the goal that is the goal of this vlog gotta be like an honest update but here's how my life's been going so basically six years ago now i think i was diagnosed with my first autoimmune disorder um it's juvenile idiopathic arthritis so it affects that's arthritis that's like the uh, it's like not is the arthritis that like your grandma would get or like her joints ache and that sort of stuff but it's also different um this develops in kids and it's an autoimmune disorder meaning my body attacks my joint so it attacks my luckily for me so far it's only diagnosed i've gotten other symptoms lately but diagnosed it's only my back my lower back my hips my knees and my ankles so that means that like my hips my ankles my knees they're all they're inflamed and that like so they'd be big they'd be like fluffy not fluffy but like have extra fluid there almost and they would ache um there are points in times where i cannot walk so i can't walk upstairs i can't do physical activity um it really limits my lifestyle and my life when it's not controlled. Luckily, recently it's been, not recently actually, but for the past, I'd say five years, it's been pretty in control. And at one point I was in medicated remission, um, <clears throat> which basically just means I was doing really, really well. It wasn't even affecting my life anymore. It just meant that I was taking medicine to control it. So I was on injections. I was on Emerol for five years along with other just different other along with other medicines that I'm no longer on that helped me get to medicated remission but then once I was in medicated remission I was only on Emerol which is a type of injection um and so for a while I was doing really really bad with that but then I got really really good but now it's getting bad again um and so it's starting to affect my joints again mainly my hips um some days I really struggle to walk right now swim which is like my sports so that's pretty hard um, and recently it's gone up my back, which is, which is odd, um, because where my arthritis joints is, there's a joint in your lower back and that's not the joint that's hurting. It's more like, it's not even on my spine either. It's up towards my shoulders. So we're wondering if it's moving up my shoulders. So for that, I'm going to have to get like some imaging done to see if there's any like arthritic damage, even though I don't technically have it up here, but basically it's flaring again because I had to do med changes because of other stuff. So that is an honest update for that um my second diagnosed autoimmune issue is ibd inflammatory bowel disease um i have ulcerative colitis so this is different when i say ibd this is not ibs this is a totally separate it's not a totally separate issue they both involve your intestines but ibs and ibd are totally different ibs is a stomach not even disorder it's a stomach syndrome where your body for whatever reason you have stomach issues you have cramping i hate to say it but this is what we're talking about pooping issues all that sort of stuff so that's a syndrome you just get symptoms of it and i'm not saying that like ibs is it hard or anything I ibs is probably hard but ibs does not cause any and has no risk to cause permanent damage or any sort of damage to your intestines well ibd can be a very severe medically severe potentially life-threatening illness because it can cause damage in your 
large intestine, your small intestine, your colon, your colon is part of your intestine, but all of that stuff um, can be life-threatening and severe with IBD. Um, so I have is all uh, I have ulcerative colitis, so that affects um, my large intestine. It does not affect like my throat or my small intestine tract. It just affects the like all of my large intestines at the bottom. So that means like when I was diagnosed, and I was only diagnosed in January, so I've had it for only six months. I haven't had it a while. Um, but basically when I was diagnosed, I'm sorry to say it, but I was literally having diarrhea 15 to 20 times a day, was not processing any food or anything. Um, I was nauseous, throwing up. It was, it was really, really bad. Um, so to diagnose it, they have to do a colonoscopy, which means they put me asleep and they literally stick a tube up my butt and they take pictures of my intestine to look for inflammation. And my colon was pretty inflamed. Um, it was pretty severe. So I started, I had to change over from Embrol because that does not treat, that does not treat IBD. While I changed over to Humira and that treats both my IBD, my ulcerative colitis and my JIA, my arthritis. Um, that medicine, however, is not working the way we want it to. So I'm right now going through probably some med changes. Um, I've been lately in and out of the ER all sorts of stuff just because I've been very, very sick. Um, my stomach is not under control. I have another symptom of ulcerative colitis is blood in your poop. Um, yeah, this might be gross. I'm sorry, but um, that means literally when I poop, I have blood in it, um, which obviously isn't healthy. That is not good. So we're working on treating, not treating, we need to treat it. Right now that's been flaring. Um, I've been getting some pretty severe stomach pain. I've lost 15 pounds of weight. I'm just really unhealthy. Okay, so basically this that I'm going to talk about now is not an autoimmune disorder. It can be, but we're going to we're going to hope and literally pray, literally I don't even know. I just hope and hope and hope that this is, does not develop into an autoimmune issue for me, but it can. Um so I was hospitalized about a month not even a month, about three to four weeks ago, I was in the hospital with not severe, but pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is pretty severe for anyone who has it. It's awful. It's literally the worst pain I've ever been in. Um, basically, my pancreas was not was not really processing what and doing what it's supposed to do. So like that regulates sugar. So like when you're diabetic, your pancreas is affected, but that's not what, what happened to me. My pancreas was very um, inflamed. It was pretty severe how inflamed it was. So um, I couldn't eat or drink. Um, I would throw it up. It, I couldn't process food. So I was admitted to the hospital for five days. Um, I was put on an IV um, for fluids that had sugar in it because I couldn't orally intake. So I couldn't orally intake liquids. So like water, anything like that, I couldn't drink. And obviously you need to drink to live. So I had an IV. I was constantly on fluids that had like some sugar and nutrients in it to hopefully like keep my body healthy. Um, I couldn't eat. So I was on, I couldn't eat for like four days. Um, I lost 10 pounds in less than a week. Um, so they talked about and considered giving me a feeding tube through my nose and down to my stomach. Um, luckily, thank God, I... Was I started to be able to process foods, um, so I slowly reintroduced a diet, um, but the recovery for that was really, really hard. Um, I lost all body strength, literally everything. It was it was awful. Um, but basically, that is actually, thank God, all better. Um, we just got those levels tested. They're coming back. They're still not normal, but they're really, really coming down. So thank God that is over for right now and we're also praying to god that that does not come back um because we don't really know what caused it it could have been one of my meds that i was on for my ulcerative colitis but it also could have been just caused by my body being my body and attacking my body uh so yeah Hey guys, so today it would be, let's see on my tower. This is literally how I keep track of days. 
Um, but today's Tuesday, so I'm gonna, like, I just unscrew this. And here's my medicine tower for the day. The pills I have for today, there's, like, I don't know, there's, like, six. One, two, seven. I have seven pills this morning that I need to take. Um, so I'm going to take them. I take normally, like, two or three at once. Because I'm... I got it swelling pills because I'm used to this. So I have like these three. They're kind of smaller. Like, I don't know. These are small. This one's kind of big, but I'm used to swallowing pills. So I'm going to take these. And then I can't take all four of these at once, but this is. Uh oh. And so it's just two. I'm going to take two and then two. And then I have to take some of these meds with food so I don't get sick. So it's like, well, it's already one. And so I'm probably taking it a little late, but I have to eat it with food. So I went out and I got a smoothie from Tropical Smoothie. Delicious. It has a little edible straw. Ugh. Some of those pills do not taste good whatsoever. Um... And then I'm also, I have asthma as well. And I've been like coughing a lot lately. So I'm taking, this is like a butyrol. It's like my emergency like nebulizer thing. No, it's not a vape. I know it looks like it, but. I have to wait 10 seconds in between each puff. I'm also taking Tylenol because I have this like, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. I have this like right here. This is in the way. Right back here. Those are actually stitches. Um, because I had to get a skin biopsy done. And one, I'm just like feeling disgusting from being sick. But two, that is really sore and is really hurting. So I'm taking just this is a cinnamon a, a, a acetaminophen, so it's literally just it's literally just Tylenol. But uh, I can't take Advil because of the medicines and conditions I have, so I will be eating eating it. I will be taking it. Delicious. So that's it for my like morning meds. Um, I take everything else at night. So so fun. I know. So I actually take this at night. But I thought I'd talk about it now because it's like I only take it once a week, so it's kind of special. But I may do it Monday, but because of like things going on and me being sick, and I was like, I was in the ER yesterday. That's a story of time for next, I don't know when, soon maybe. But I take this, like, this is an injection. Um, it's Humira. So I just do this on my leg. I probably won't record me doing it because I hate injections, even though I get them every single day. Every single week. I've gotten them every single week for like six years. Um, I still hate them. So I'd rather not show you guys doing it. And I'll tell you a little secret. I am 16, almost 17. And I still do not give myself these. Uh-uh. They're like way scary. So that is something I still do not do. Maybe embarrassing for me. Maybe not if you're in the autoimmune community. It's embarrassing that I don't give these to myself. But <clears throat> for fun, I think I'll show you. I have like a starter kit thing that I got when I first started it, which is how I was supposed to learn how to use it, but I didn't. But it like kind of got me familiar with it. So I'll get that out and I will show you. Okay, but basically this is like the testing kit I was telling you about. There's no real meds in it. This was just my way um, <clears throat> of getting familiar with it because I just started Humera six months ago. I've been on injections, like, for six years, but we had to, like, change meds and stuff. So this is a different kind of injector I had been using before. Um, so basically inside it just gave me, like, paperwork info, but this is what, like, I actually want to show you what it is. This is the exact same injector that I use that has actual medicine in it, the one I just showed you out there. Um, so as you can see, it just says reusable practice pen. There's no medicine in it. There's no needle. So like if I, when I do this on me, I'm not giving myself meds, but this is, this would be the way that I give it to myself. So there's just like two different caps. They're labeled one and two. It's literally just like an EpiPen. I take off one 
then I take off two. The needle would be in here and the needle would be covered the entire time I give it to me. Like, I, I mean, the needle would come out, but like, I won't see it, which is good because needles are scary, even for people who deal with needles all the time. Um, so basically what I would do, I'm going to move, but I will be giving myself fake giving it to me, this injection. So I would, this is not loaded properly. Okay. Now I have to reset it. Okay. So I'm going to be giving this, I said, I'm going to be giving this to me. It's a fake. So no worries. No needle. That's why I'm not going to flinch or anything. Um, so basically I'm going to uncap cap one. We, you throw it away. This is just a one-time use, but this is reasonable, so we don't. Take off two. And then what I do is I grab a piece of my skin, like, that I know I'm going to do it on. I always do it on my legs. And then I basically, I clench the skin to, like, raise it. And then I place the needle on it. I always say one, two, three before I do it. So I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to press. And I have to stay still because at this time, like, this is when the needle would go in. Um, and I just count to 10. So, like, we just count it out to, like, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, I might do it longer, but whatever. And then I look. There's a little line in here that's yellow. And when it's done, you'll see all of yellow. So, at this point, it'll be done. So, all I do is I just pick it up. And this little white thing would cover up the needle. So, I won't ever see the needle. And then that's it. I only do that once a week. But that's what it would be like actually giving it to me. Again, I probably will not show it because I am a scaredy cat so sorry about that but it's scary so yeah okay hey guys so it's like the end of the week like i filmed this video so long ago but i decided to edit it now and i'm super 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 excited for you guys to watch it and i hope you watched it and i hope you loved it but that did not end up being like a week in my life and it ended up being literally a day even just a few hours i just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of my life and what it looks like because it's not perfect like it seems um and that's just my meds but i'm thinking about doing more of these so let me know and thank you guys for watching so i really 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 hope you enjoyed so thank you <laughs>